Hey everybody, so this is gonna be a quick video over the parts of your eye and the functions of those parts. All right, so let's jump right into it by going to a diagram of your eye. Here we go. Um, so this is an image of your eye like from the side and it's cut in half, okay? So we'll talk about some structures that have kind of less uh, important functions. I mean, they have important functions. If, if you get a hole in uh, like your sclera, for example, you're gonna have problems but they don't do a lot of things for focusing and processing. So for example, the sclera, all right, it looks like it's pointing to just right here, but it's actually pointing to this entire orange area back here. So the sclera is the whites of your eye, all right? And it doesn't do much other than keep light out of, keep light out of the uh, eye. So that light is only getting in and out through the pupil. Um, so that's basically all it does. And if you ever got a hole in it, you would have problems, all right? Uh, but that's pretty much all it does. We'll go over here then to the cornea. Now, the cornea is very important for focusing. In fact, it's responsible for about 80% of the focusing of light on your retina. But it doesn't change much, so it's kind of a static structure. It changes over the course of your life, but in any one, between any two moments, it doesn't change shape. All right, so the cornea, what is it? It's that clear dome at the front of your eye. So if you ever like, if you do this, if you put contacts in, all right, and you're putting the contact uh, uh, over the place to allow you to see, what you're doing is you're putting the contact on your cornea. Um, so if you, if you were to touch your eye, if you were to look straight at your finger and then put your finger to your eye, you would be touching your cornea. So it's just a clear, transparent dome at the front of your eye. You got the pupil, all right, that's the center, all right, that's that black spot in the center of your eye. It's not actually a structure, it's a hole, okay? The inside of your eye is dark, that's why it looks black, all right? So um, pupils are not a thing, they're just a hole. So a pupil is a hole, all right? It's like an aperture, like on a camera. So when a camera flashes, right, it opens up, exposes, light gets in as an expo and is exposed to the film and the aperture closes. Well, that's basically what your pupil does is it changes shape to let more or less light in. In fact, when it uh, closes, when there's a lot of light, that's the pupillary response. When it opens, when there's not a lot of light, when you're in the dark, that's the pupillary response. All right, <clears throat> so the pupil getting larger or bigger, that's the pupillary response. It usually gets uh, uh, larger, or smaller, I said larger or bigger earlier, I meant larger or smaller. It usually gets larger or smaller based on how much light's in the environment. Now, what changes the size of the pupil? Well, that's your lens, or not your lens, sorry. That's your iris, all right? The iris is the colored part of your eye. Well, the colored part of your eye is a muscle, all right? And it uh, opens, increasing the size of the pupil, allowing more light in, or closes, reducing the size of the pupil and letting less light in. Now, behind the pupil, you have your lens. Now, the lens, is, uh, a, the lens is a pretty active part of your eye because it changes shape pretty much any time anything moves more than 20 feet away. Um, and so, uh, you've, the lens has these muscles here all around it. It, look, it looks like it's only on the top and the bottom, but it actually is all around the lens. Those are ciliary muscles, and those ciliary muscles, when they, um, uh, kind of open up, they pull the lens flat, all right? But when the ciliary muscles flex, all right, they close, the ciliary muscle close, and that's, that allows the lens to take on this more oval shape. Well, <clears throat> if something gets too far away, then the light, or sorry, not too far away, if it gets too, too close, then the light's coming in, in at a weird angle. And so what has, has to happen is that the ciliary muscle close, all right? They, they, they flex, to, which closes, which reduces tension on the lens, allowing the lens to kind of become this circular shape. Well, the reason that matters is because when the lens is more circular, it bends light more. And that's good because that, uh, can make that refocuses light. So like if, you know, if the light's off 20, 20 feet in front of you, right? So this is the process of accommodation. You can see it right here, or that's the term. All right, and this is the process right here. 
So if light's about 20 feet away, it comes in through the cornea, the cornea begins to bend the light, and the lens bends it uh, at, uh, again to make it fall right on the fovea, which is the center of your retina, which is the area of greatest detail vision. Well, if something gets closer than 20 feet, the light's coming in at an odd angle. And so what, again, because the cornea can't change shape, the lens has to change shape. It does that by the ciliary muscles flexing, meaning they close, allowing the lens to see how it's kind of flat here, and then it's more circular here, and even more circular here. All right. Well, here, actually, these aren't too much different. Um, this, is, this is actually what the center picture is what would happen if your lens didn't change shape. You see how up here, when the object is way off in the distance, the lens being this kind of this flat properly focuses the, the light on the fovea. Remember that center part of your retina. As the object comes forward, if the lens doesn't change shape, then because the object is closer, it ends up the if the lens doesn't change shape, it actually gets focused behind the, the fovea. And so the image, what that would do for us is it would make it, the image look blurry. And so what happens is that as the image as the Thing that you're looking at comes closer to you. The ciliary muscles close, allowing the lens to take on a more circular shape like you see here, or more ovalous shape. That bends the light more, causing the focus to be pulled from here up back onto the fovea. Okay, so that's what your lens does. Uh, the two last pieces we'll talk about are the retina which is all the purple piece here and the optic nerve here. The retina is the most important part. Well, actually, I can't even say that. If the image doesn't fall on the retina, you don't see. All right? In fact, if you have a detached retina, which is a condition that prevents the retina from working, excuse me, please, then you don't see. So if the retina is not there, let's say maybe something happened and it's been destroyed, or it's not working right, like with a detached retina, then you don't see because the receptors were the, the the retina is where all of your receptors are. So all your rods and cones, they're in your retina. And the center of your retina is your fovea. And that is the area of finest detail vision. So this is why you can read in order for, for you to read something, in order for you to see the letters, you have to be looking straight at something. In fact, you might even try it. Try to look off to the side. So Try to read this word I, but look right here. Actually, it, a better demonstration is try to read the word I, but look right here where my cursor is. All right, you'll know can't. And you know the word's I, you know the word is I because you've seen it before, but you can't read it from your peripheral vision. If you're looking at my mouse cursor right now, but you're paying attention to the word I, right, you can't read it because. If you're looking at where my cursor is right now, then the word I isn't falling on your fovea. It's falling off to the side of your fovea. Well, you need things to fall on the fovea for you to, to see it in detail. Um, and that's because of the distribution of cods, uh, cones and rods, but that's for another video. Now, all the receptors in your retina are all connected to ganglion cells that are also in your retina. Those ganglion cells, though, have axons, and those axons leave the eye out the back. Those axons, all bundled together, make up your optic nerve, and that's what this is. The optic nerve is the, the axons from the ganglion cells in your retina that carries the vision about what, the information about what you're seeing up to your brain. So it carries it from the eye to the thalamus and then back to the occipital cortex, which is where it needs to be for you to be able to see it, for, or at least for you to be able to be aware that you saw anything. And there you go, guys. There is a quick video over the parts of the eye and their functions. So again, the parts, you got your sclera, you got your cornea, you got your pupil, you've got your uh, iris, you've got your lens, you've got the ciliary muscles around the lens, you've got the retina on the back, you've got the receptors inside the retina, the center of the retina, you have the fovea, and then you have the ganglion cells, which originate in the retina, but then leave creating, and their bundled axons create 
the optic nerve. All right, guys, that is that. I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, per the usual, send them my way. If not, then I'll see you all later on.